So let's take another look at greedy algorithms. So we're looking at algorithms where we need to achieve a global optimum by making a sequence of choices. So in a greedy strategy, what we do is we make the next choice based on some local criteria. So there may be a number of choices we could make, but we just pick one of them based on something which looks good at the moment. And now we never go back and revise an earlier decision. So we deterministically search through the space of solutions by picking a good choice at each step. And this drastically reduces the space in which we have to search. So the tricky thing is that this strategy very often doesn't work. So if we have a greedy strategy in mind, we need to go back and prove that the way we have made our local choices actually achieves a global optimum. So we have seen three algorithms so far which follow this greedy paradigm. The first was Dijkstra's algorithm for the single source shortest path problem. So recall that in this algorithm, we kept burning vertices. And at each stage, we froze the distance to the nearest unburned vertex and claimed that this would in fact be the shortest distance to that vertex from the source. So globally, the optimum we achieve in this algorithm is that the distance assigned by this greedy strategy happens to be the shortest distance from the source. A closely related algorithm is Prim's algorithm for the, short, for the minimum cost spanning tree. So here we incrementally build up a tree and at each stage we add to the spanning tree the nearest vertex that is not yet in the tree. And here the global optimum that we achieve is that we construct a spanning tree that is minimum cost. Another algorithm for the minimum cost spanning tree is Kruskal's algorithm. Here we don't build up a tree directly, but rather we keep collecting edges and form a connected component overall, which becomes a tree. So here we keep adding to the current set of edges in our set, the next smallest edge that doesn't form a cycle with those that we've already chosen. And now the global optimum is that the edges that we collect in this way form a minimum cost spanning tree. So now let's look at a completely different problem, a problem called interval scheduling. So suppose we have a special video classroom where we can deliver online lectures. Now different teachers want to book the classroom to deliver classes and each instructor has a slot that he would like to deliver his lecture in. So instructor I has a slot that starts at a time SI and finishes at FI. Right? So you have a slot which starts at SI and finishes at FI. Now two instructors may have overlapping slots. So there might be somebody who wants a slot like this. Okay, So the blue slot starts before the red slot ends. So obviously both these slots cannot be given bookings because they will interfere with each other. So our task is to look at the set of bookings and choose a subset which is feasible. That is, no two bookings that we choose interfere with each other so that we maximize the number of teachers who get to use the room. So broadly, if we follow a greedy approach, this is what we would do. Among all the bookings that are not yet allocated and which are still available to allocate, we will pick one based on some local strategy. Then we would remove all conflicting bookings, bookings that overlap with this booking that with the slot that we just allocated. And somehow we have to argue that this sequence of bookings that we are choosing maximizes the number of teachers who get to use the room. So let's look at some typical greedy strategies that one might want. So one strategy might be to choose the booking whose start time is earliest. But it's not difficult to come up with a counterexample. So if you look at this picture, there is one long green booking, okay, which starts earliest and in fact ends after all the other bookings are made. So if we use this greedy strategy, we would allocate this very long booking and the entire period will be allocated to just one teacher. Whereas if we chose the booking that started a little later, then we could actually satisfy six teachers bookings. And since our goal is to maximize the number of teachers who can use the room, that would be a better strategy. So this greedy strategy is clearly flawed. 
Another greedy strategy we might think of is to choose a booking whose interval is shortest. Once again, here is a counter example. The interval in the middle is the shortest one. But if we choose this, it is in conflict with both the other bookings, so we have to rule both of them out. So if we choose the shortest interval, then we can only allocate one teacher to the room. Whereas if we ignore that strategy, and if we choose the two longer intervals, then we can actually use the room for two teachers and get a better optimum for the problem that we have chosen. So the previous example suggests that there is something to do with conflicts. So maybe we might choose uh, bookings in terms of how many other bookings they rule out. So one strategy now we might think of is to choose a booking that overlaps with the minimum number of other bookings. In other words, by choosing this booking, we rule out as few other bookings as possible. So let's look at this example. Here, the center booking overlaps with only two, this one and this one. Every other booking overlaps with at least three. So if we choose this booking, then we rule out the bookings on either side of it. And that means that we also, we can do either this one or one of these, right? So if we take the center booking, we can do at most three bookings overall. We, can we can't do the two on either side of it. So we can either do the two extreme ones or we can do any one of these and any one of these, right? So we can do a total of three, we can allocate a total of three bookings among these. However, if we don't do this, right? If we choose a better strategy, a better strategy would be to clearly take the four on the top. Okay? So we can allocate four teachers this room if we don't use the strategy that we must pick the one with the minimum number of conflicts. So this greedy strategy also fails. So here is a fourth strategy. Instead of choosing the one like we began with, whose start time is earliest, let's choose the one whose finish time is earliest. So can we come up with a counter example? Or should we instead try to prove that this is correct? So in fact, this strategy does work and let's see how we can prove it. Before we prove it, let's formally write down the algorithm a little more clearly. So we start with a set of bookings B and we want to construct from this set a subset A of accepted bookings. So initially, we have no accepted bookings because we're just starting to build this set. And now we do the following. So long as we have pending bookings which are still feasible, we pick that booking which has the smallest finishing time among the set which is still with us and we add that to B, that to A. And now having added that to A, we cannot schedule any more bookings which overlap with this B. So we remove from our set capital B all the bookings which overlap with the booking B that we just chose. Okay? So each time we pick up the next booking which is still available with the smallest finishing time and we remove everything which is in conflict with it. So here is a, an example of how our algorithm would work. So here we have nine bookings. The blue lines indicate the bookings and the numbers of the bookings are given above them. So in this, the one with the, so initially our set B has all these nine bookings, okay? And our set A is initially empty. So now what we look at, it's the smallest finishing time among the nine bookings and that happens to be one, right? So we select one and then having selected one, we find all the bookings which overlap with it. So two overlaps with one and so does six. So we remove two from our set and we remove six from our set. So now B has been pruned to three, five, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And A has the booking number one. So now among this feasible set, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, we pick the, pick the one that ends earliest, which is three. And then since 4 is in conflict with 3, we remove 4. So continuing in this way, we now pick 5 because 5 is the earliest one to finish. 
And then because 7 is in conflict with 5, we remove 7. And now we have 2 left, 8 and 9. But 8 finishes before 9. We could actually pick either one, but our algorithm will pick 8 because 8 has the shortest finishing time. So we pick 8 and then we will say that 9 is not feasible, so we remove it. And now we have that B is empty and A is 1, 3, 5, 8. And since B is empty, we have no more jobs to schedule nor no more uh, bookings to honor. So the algorithm ends. Right? So we have found a feasible set of four bookings that can be accommodated within this list. So our goal is to show that the algorithm, the solution A produced by our algorithm is actually correct. So suppose there is an optimal set of bookings O. Now we cannot in general assume that our solution A is identical to O because there may be multiple ways of producing solutions of the same size. Remember that all we want is a solution which allocates as many teachers as possible to, to rooms. So there may be two different ways to allocate the same number of teachers. So we can't argue that A and O are identical, but it suffices to show that A and O are of the same size. In other words, no matter what optimal booking is produced by some other strategy, our strategy, our greedy strategy produces one which is of the same size. So let A be the set of bookings that our strategy chooses and this could be the order in which it chooses. So I1 is chosen first, then I2 and so on. So when I1 is chosen, I2 is still feasible and since I1 was the earliest finishing time overall, we have that the finishing time of I1 is before the starting time of I2, the finishing time of I2 is before the starting time of I3 and so on. So these bookings in A are in sorted order. Now let's assume that we have an optimum solution with M bookings, J1 to JM, again in sorted order. So J1 ends before J2 starts, J2 ends before J3 starts and so on. So our goal is to show that K in fact is the same as M. In other words, the optimum solution is of the same size as the solution that the greedy strategy produces. So we will actually show that for each job in the sequence i and j. Okay? The corresponding job in the a sequence finishes no later than the corresponding job in the o sequence. So for every r up to k, f of ir is earlier than or equal to f of jr. So in this sense, we are trying to argue that the greedy solution stays ahead of any optimum solution that you might produce by any other method. So the proof of this claim is by induction on R. So when we look at the first job, I1, we know that I1 is overall the earliest finish time among all the jobs, all the uh, all the bookings in our list. right? Since I1 has the earliest finish time among all the bookings, it must definitely be less than or equal to f of j1 because j1 cannot be smaller than the overall minimum. Now, let's assume that we have established by induction that up to r minus 1, the booking i minus i of r minus 1 has a finish time which is earlier than the booking j of r minus 1. Then we claim it must be the case that i r finishes before j r. Because if we didn't have this, then we would have the picture as below. So we have that i r minus 1 finishes before j r minus 1. Now suppose we claim that JR actually ends before IR. Then our algorithm would at this stage find that JR is still feasible because it doesn't overlap with IR minus 1. And among the jobs which remain, JR has an earlier finishing time than IR. So our greedy strategy would pick JR rather than IR. So therefore the fact that we have picked IR and not JR means that we cannot have a picture like this. It cannot be that IR ends strictly after JR. It must end before or at the same time as JR. So now, having shown that the greedy strategy always stays ahead, we will now claim that actually our solution must be optimal. So suppose that M is actually strictly greater than K. Then we know that when we reach IK, right, it is before jk. Now because we have 
a solution which is longer than k, there is another job after this called jk plus 1. Okay, assuming that m is strictly because this goes up to job booking j, right? So since this happens, there must be a sequence of jobs, uh, sequence of bookings after j k. Okay, so let's look at this sequence. Now the claim is that this particular booking at this point is not ruled out by anything that has happened before, right? So if you look at i1 up to ik, none of these overlap with jk plus 1 because jk plus 1 is after jk, right? So ik finishes before jk and jk finishes before, before jk plus 1 starts. Therefore, ik is compatible with jk plus 1. This means at this stage, b is not empty, right? When we have finished in our greedy algorithm processing i1 to ik, b is not empty. But we claim that we stopped with ik and the only reason our greedy algorithm stops is because b is empty. Right? So if there is a job or a booking jk plus 1, then it cannot be that our algorithm stopped at this point. So there is a contradiction. Right? So therefore, we cannot have any bookings in, in the optimum solution which go beyond k and therefore m must be equal to k. So having shown that it's correct, let's just quickly look at how we would implement this and estimate the upper bound of the complexity. So initially we sort the n bookings by finishing time. This takes time n log n for n bookings. And now let's assume that the bookings are renumbered 1, 2 up to n in this sorted order, right? So booking 1 has the earliest finishing time, booking 2 has the second earliest finishing time and so on. Now we set up in one order n scan an array st such that st of i contains the starting time of booking i. Now we start with booking 1 right? and each time we choose a booking j, we start from j plus 1 and keep scanning the start times of bookings till we find the earliest k whose starting time is beyond f of j. In other words, we are looking, so, so we know that these uh, bookings are in order of finishing time, right? So we know that after j, the booking that ends next is j plus 1, but if its starting time is not beyond the start finishing time of j, it's overlapping, so it cannot be compatible. So we just scan this uh, array st until we find the smallest k, which actually starts after fj ends, right? So in this way, in one order n scan, we can go through all our bookings and pick up a greedy uh, optimum set. Right. So this is an order n scan, sorting takes order n log n. So overall, this greedy strategy is correct and it takes time o n log n.